today we will be talking about what is called an AVN. No, AVN means avascular necrosis of bone. Another name for it is osteonecrosis. We will be talking about osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Unfortunately, this COVID-19 episode or pandemic all over the world forced many people in the hospital for the treatment of serious cases. Almost every patient who was admitted in the hospital was given steroid as a life-saving measure. And many of these patients ultimately developed so-called avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Throughout this communication, we will keep on using the word AVN just to minimize the number of the words. Though we will be talking about avian of the femoral head, but avian can also occur in many other bones. Those which are notorious are uh, femoral head, scaphoid, talus and many others. Common sites for non-traumatic avascular necrosis or avian or osteonecrosis are proximal, proximal uh, femur, proximal scaphoid, proximal talus. Now, why do these areas get avian more frequently? In the femoral head, in the scaphoid, in the talus, it is the proximal part of the bone which undergoes avian, avascular necrosis. The blood supply of all the three bones is distal-proximal. From the distal end of the bone, the blood supply enters into the proximal one. So, in a way, if there is some damage to the bone, the proximal part of the bone does not receive enough blood supply. The blood supply may be cut off by trauma, by thromboembolic phenomenon, by increased intraosseous tension or increased intraarticular tension these precarious blood supplies can be cut off and you get what is called bone necrosis or osteonecrosis. What are the risk factors? Well, these are all given in the tablets, in almost all the books one can see. Some of the common risk factors which have been observed, as I mentioned, are corticosteroids, alcoholism, coagulation disorders, hemoglobinopathy, autoimmune disorders, smoking. hyperlipidemia, radiation exposure, pregnancies, many other uh, uh, rheumatoid disorders, oncotherapy. You know, in oncotherapy, we give not only chemicals, many times we give steroids, also give radiation. So many of these things get collected and one can get avian without injury. Most of the people who get avian of the femoral head in addition to these risk factors, they also may be having many other comorbidities. And this is what shows that the blood supply of the femoral head is precarious. It goes from the distal to the proximal side. In all these, femoral head, scaphoid, talus, it goes from the head to the body of the talus. And what gets, what gets necrosis is the proximal part of the femoral head proximal part of the scaphoid, proximal part of the talus. Just, just for memorizing as students, it is the proximal part of all these bones which can show osteonecrosis or AVN. Another example of the same precarious blood supply of the femoral neck and what are the clinical symptoms? Why does a patient come to you? It is true that we will also, we should become conscious about this entity and we should keep it in mind if a patient comes to you with pain in the hip joint, difficulties in walking, more, more pain when the patient is walking. And then if you feel sometime there may be a local tenderness. One of the important things that happens is selective restriction of movements. The, in the hip joint, it is abduction and internal rotation which gets restricted in these patients. 
some of the patients may be unilateral but if a person is of long standing many of these unilateral cases ultimately start showing the involvement of the other hip joint as well now what are the clinical signs patient walks with pain he may have pain in front of the joint and there will be restriction of a range of movements but shortening in the length of the bone would be a very very late phenomenon when most of the bone collapses under the pressure of the body and the destruction caused by avascular necrosis what do we how do we confirm the diagnosis see one is try to find out the history to look at the patient clinically and then think of the next in, next investigation the most commonly available investigation available in our country is an x-ray x-ray would start showing you changes only after about 3 to 4 months of the of the insult whereas mri shows the changes within about 3 to 5 weeks of the insult whereas isotope bone scan pick up the diseased area at the necrotic area within 3 to 5 days the isotope can be non specific mri is very educative one can diagnose those things much earlier but x rays take about 3 to 4 months from the date of insult to be visible in the x ray and what do we look for in the x rays what do we look for femoral head congruency is the head spherical is it spheroidal is it fragmented is it depressed are there areas of sclerosis are there areas of collapse are there any fissures which means micro fractures we will see as we pass through this talk we will see all these things in different patients we were talking about what are the investigations available i should do bone scan as i mentioned in 3 to 5 days mri 3 to 5 weeks x rays 3 to 5 months as students i think we should know it that when we are looking at the x ray and x ray shows the changes they could have been detected earlier by an mri but the mri facilities are not available to everybody in the whole of the country whereas x ray facilities are available to all of us in the whole of the country the isotopes show it's not isotope again is not available everywhere mri is available in most of the big cities now but isotope is available only in specialized places isotope will show you a necrosed area surrounded by a reactive reactive inflammation around it and this has been given the name of donut appearance this is the necrosed area surrounded by the reaction of the living tissues around it giving rise to what we call a, a donut appearance when we look at the mri mri coincidentally this mri belongs to mri t2 image the bladder is showing a white collection in t1 images the bladder will show black signal i think as students we should know t to mri will show you water white t1 